What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel for another accessibility review. This time we'll be taking a look at the highly anticipated Resident Evil Village. I recently got into the franchise with the 2 and 3 remakes, which I absolutely adored, played a butt ton of, but I wasn't actually able to finish 7 because it made me so violently motion sick. 30 minutes of that game and I would have to go and lay down in a dark room for several hours because it would trigger a very, very bad migraine. So I've been very cautiously hyped for Village. Now I usually focus in on cognitive accessibility, which is the area that affects me the most, but there are some glaringly painful accessibility issues in other areas that I will absolutely have to address too. This is actually the first time I've ever reviewed a Resi game. I did play the 2 and 3 remakes on stream with a little help from chat when I was getting stuck on things. So I was eager to find out whether playing Village solo would be tricky or not, because sometimes I need a little bit of assistance on puzzles and stuff like that. But I was pleasantly surprised at my ability to figure out what I was doing. So initially the game has three difficulty modes in line with previous games, casual, standard and hardcore, with more difficulty modes opening up once you complete the game. The wording is more or less in line with the 2 and 3 remakes, although casual was called assisted mode. In 7 these were easy, normal and madhouse. I personally really like the difference in wording in Village because what is considered easy or normal varies from player to player and is completely subjective. Village doesn't actually tell you what mechanics these modes affect, so whether that's weaker enemies or more supplies, players just have to kind of guess. Actually explaining what these modes affect would have been a really good addition to help players figure out the right mode for them. The game does hold your hand at the beginning, showing you the controls and giving you a chance to use them in the opening scenes, which they also did in 7 and worked really well. There are also pretty decent interaction prompts that pop up when you approach an object that you can interact with. Not only does it tell you what button to press, but it also tells you what pressing that button will actually do, which is very helpful. The game does give you hints at times for objects, so for example if you interact with the door but you don't have the right key or object to fit it, it might say something like, there's space for something spherical here. This is really useful for players who are trying to figure out exactly what it is they need to do and gives them a clue about what to look out for in order to progress through the game. There isn't really any kind of puzzle assistance as such. I haven't personally needed it, but being a big Resi fan and having played some of the previous games, I kind of understand the language of the games and can quite easily figure out what I need to do now. I'm definitely interested to know from those of you that haven't played a Resi game before what you think about this. Do you think the game needs puzzle assist, maybe on casual mode? Let me know what you think in the comments. One of my favourite things about the recent Resi games is the way the map turns blue once you've found everything in that room, so if it's still red you know there's an item that you still need to keep searching for. The controls themselves can be remapped this time around in one of four preset schemes. You're able to set toggle or hold for run, which is incredibly helpful for players that struggle to hold down a button for long periods of time, but there's no custom remapping available. Unfortunately, all of the presets involve the player having to click the analog sticks for crouching and running, which is very, very difficult for some players. Now, there wasn't any remapping available in 7 at all, so this is certainly an improvement, but there's still a little way to go to really ensure that this remapping is robust enough for players to actually use. As I'm sure you know by now, my memory is something that I really struggle with, so the new addition in Village of a diary and a tip section in the menu are super helpful to help you recap the story and also to remind you of the various controls and mechanics in the game. This isn't just useful for players with memory problems, it's also really useful if you haven't picked up the game in a while uh, and need a reminder of what the heck you're meant to be doing. So this is a new addition, they didn't have it in 7, I really love it, I think it's great. Personally, I use subtitles to help me process what I'm hearing, so my cognitive issues mean that I often miss what's being said or I get confused about who's speaking, so I use subtitles quite a lot. But the subtitles in Village leave a lot to be desired. The text is a nice sans serif font, it's a pretty decent size, but it's very very thin and there's no option to pop a background on it which can make it really difficult to read at times. A lot of the village is covered in snow so the thin white text on the background 
isn't great at the best of times. Now, bizarrely, there is a black transparent background on some of the other texts in the game, so it's a little strange that this wasn't done for the subtitles and players weren't given the option to make it happen either. You can't resize them and you can't change the colour, so if you're unable to read them as they are, there's not really anything you can do about that. The font is also a big problem in the Duke's shop. The choice of a thin, italicised black font on a beige background makes it really difficult to read, even for someone with 2020 vision. But the biggest thing the game is missing is captions. All of the speech in game is captured with the subtitles, but no other sounds are. So that means all those creepy noises, birds squawking, lichens roaring, footsteps, all of that beautiful sound design is lost on players who are deaf or hard of hearing. And as you can imagine, in a horror game, that puts them at a big disadvantage. Not only are they missing a huge part of the atmosphere and the spookiness and the tension building, they're not able to hear when enemies are near, you're not going to get any of the audio cues that you need to play the game successfully. So this means that many of my deaf and hard of hearing friends have had to put the game down completely because it's pretty much unplayable. I would really, really love to see more captioning going on in horror games because it's something that's really, really missing. Lastly, I have to talk about motion sickness. This is what prevented me from finishing 7, so I have been so nervous about this in 8. I did get motion sickness after my first play session, but I have spent a couple of days messing around with various settings, and I'm so happy to say that I think I've finally cracked it and I have been able to keep playing the game because holy shit you guys, it's, it's so damn good, it is such a good game. So the camera and display settings are more or less the same as 7 with a couple of additions. You can now control the camera acceleration. Once I turned all camera acceleration off, my motion sickness got a lot better. For me, I prefer having camera wobble on because it feels more lifelike. When I have camera wobble off, it feels too smooth, like it's almost on rails and my brain gets a bit weirded out by it. I also slowed my camera movement down so I'm not moving too quickly. Ray tracing on Xbox Series X sets the frame rate to 45 frames per second, which apparently my brain did not appreciate. I found that when I turned the ray tracing off, it felt a lot smoother and I felt a lot less sick. It's annoying that I have to compromise the ray tracing because it does make the game look absolutely gorgeous, but I'd rather not trigger a migraine or throw up, so I think it's the right choice. So those are the settings that helped me personally, but everyone's going to have different motion sickness triggers, so I strongly recommend you play around and see what works for you. Hopefully you'll find something that clicks for your brain and you can keep playing. Do let me know in the comments if you are able to crack it. I think the big thing we're missing, especially for console users, that can really help with motion sickness is being able to adjust the field of view. This is available unofficially on PC with the use of a mod, but not on console, which is a big shame because having a wider field of view in games usually helps reduce motion sickness for me. So on the cognitive side, it actually does pretty well. I was able to overcome most of my barriers, but unfortunately the poor captioning and the lack of proper control remapping makes it fail pretty hard in terms of deaf accessibility and mobility accessibility. I do feel like Capcom are a little bit behind on accessibility. We're starting to see improvements from game to game here and there, but there's still lots of room for improvement and hopefully we'll see that in the coming years so that everybody can enjoy these games because I love them so much and I wish that all my disabled friends could experience that joy too. Thank you for watching, if you enjoyed this review please give it a thumbs up and let me know how you got on with Resident Evil Village in the comments below and I will see you guys next time. Bye!